we welcome you to our worship service today. It's a joy in our wonderful day that the Lord has given us to worship him and to share the blessings of the Sabbath. I know we have had a long week with many issues. Now we want to welcome each and every one of us to join us in our worship service from Northview SDA Church. May God bless us all as we worship together. We'll have our programs this day. It's uh, our communication Sabbath. We are going to start with worship God through songs. Then we'll have our Bible study which is the lesson that we are going to discuss. Thereafter, we'll have our divine service. So I want to welcome our viewers, wherever you are watching us from, take your Bibles and let us worship our God this day to enjoy the blessings of the Sabbath. Before we start the programs, we'll humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we come before your presence this Sabbath day. We ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. The programs that have been prepared for us and the blessings that have been prepared for us join us today in our various homes. As we worship you, may you be able to talk to us, to each and every soul that is watching this program. And by the end of the Sabbath, may all of us have something to encourage our lives with. It's a humble prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Happy day. Welcome to today's Sabbath and welcome to today's music session. I want to invite all of you to join us as we sing for the Lord today. And the theme of today is, there is power in the word. And... Our starting hymn is hymn number 286. This is a hymn that talks about the wonderful words of life. Welcome. Thank 
Sabbath children. Happy day. Today we are going to look about prophecy, but before I start, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Guide us as you are going through the prophecy. In Jesus' name, in our topic today is about an ancient king's dream. It is coming from the book of Daniel, chapter 2. This one, as you can see, is the temple which the Israelites used to worship their God in. One day, King Nebuchadnezzar captured the Israelites and he burnt their temple and, say, and took all the cups and said that his God is better than the God of the Israelites. One day, the king went to sleep. He dreamt about a statue and a rock which came and crushed the statue. When he woke up, he was not able to remember. He ordered for his witches, sorcerers, and magicians, but they couldn't be able to interpret his dream. So he ordered them to be killed. Even Daniel was supposed to be killed. But Daniel came courageously and told the king, I know of a God who can interpret for you your dream. Then Daniel called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to help him pray so that he can interpret the king's dream. Then Daniel told the king, This is the dream. You dreamt about a statue, head made out of gold, arms made out of silver, waist made out of bronze, and legs made out of iron, and feet made out of iron and clay. Then a rock will come and it will crush the statue. Then Daniel explained to the king, In Daniel chapter 2 verse 38, You are that head of gold, then another kingdom will come silver, then another, the third kingdom which will rule over the world, earth, which is brass, then iron, then feet of iron and clay. Then a stone will come and it will hit the statue. Then, let me now explain. This is Babylon, the head which ruled from 605 to 539 BC. Medians and Persians, or Medo-Persians, which ruled from 539 to 331 BC. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 21, we find the West, which is Greece, which ruled from 331 to 168 BC. Then legs of, uh, legs of iron, Rome, which ruled from 168 BC to AD 476. Feet of iron and clay, AD 476. And there we are today. We saw that Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, and they divided Europe. They were conquered, but in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, we see, And shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed? This kingdom is Jesus' kingdom, which shall come and hit the statue, and it, it will fill the world. The rock is Christ's eternal kingdom. We find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, or Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. This rock is Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. This is God speaking to us and telling us, let not our hearts be troubled. He has gone home to prepare a place for us, and he will come again and receive us to take us home. So this teaches us that let us put our hopes waiting for the second returning of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping us see the prophecy. Thank you for letting us understand and let us be good. In Jesus' name we pray. So soon we'll come back to church, but stay home, stay safe, 
make sure you sanitize and wash your hands. Amen. So our next song, welcome to our next song, which is hymn number 614, Sound the Battle Cry. So let's all sing like soldiers. Uh, I don't know if soldiers sing, but we are going to sing this song as we march and, you know, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 to this Bible study. It is lesson number six. And today, our communication team from the communication department is leading us in this lesson discussion. Before we start, let, it, let our brother Onyancha pray for us. Let's have our servant pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath morning. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you and to share your word, Lord. Lord, as we discuss le uh, lesson this morning, what do we pray that you may guide us, give us wisdom to be able to understand and interpret your, your word correctly, Father. Lord, help our viewers to be able to, to understand the lesson. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, our brother Nyancha. Let us just uh, introduce ourselves before we start uh, the discussion. I will start with my far left. Mm. Say your name. And then Abi Sabbath. Name. My name is Clive Onyancha. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Welcome again. This is Robin on Tita. Happy Sabbath. My name is Glenna Kerubo. Welcome to Communication Sabbath. And my name is Oliver Rometi. Welcome. Uh, like I say, this is our sixth lesson. And the title of our lesson is, Is Interpretation Needed? So we want to see if we really need to interpret 
the Bible for us to understand it very well. You understand that uh, for the last few weeks we've been discussing the scriptures or the Bible and we realize that in this world we have over 33,000 Christian denominations using the same Bible but they differ in the doctrine so we started to know how do they why do they differ and we realize it's because of how they interpret the Bible we went further and tried to understand what influences their interpretation and we realize that one that in, in, the interpretation is influenced by tradition experience culture reason and even the bible itself but today we want to see because interpretation is influenced by these factors do we then approach the bible with a blank mind do we just take the word of the bible just the way it is because like the writer says there is a woman who the husband went with another woman he ran away with another woman and she was praying and she opened the bible to get consolation on this and as she flipped up opened the bible she fell into this verse genesis 3 15 and she read it was reading i will create enmity between thee and the woman so she thought god is telling her that he will create an enmity between his husband her husband and that woman and she said hallelujah because she read the bible with a blank mind if we decide to do that then it will be very hard for us brothers and sisters you read the bible with a blank mind we will not be even able to know if this is a parable or a, a prophetic symbol or a, a historical narrative you see like there's a parable where adam they say lazarus died and was taken to abraham's bosom so if you go and read this directly and you start imagining that when you die you will be taken to abraham's bosom imagine all these people who are dying today could they even fit in abraham's bosom so this calls for interpretation we have to interpret the bible and not just interpretation interpreting correctly so today we want to see at least three things or four things which can uh, I mean, the, the principle to use in interpreting the Bible, and this will guide us. We will use, we will see the preposition. Correct, tradition and culture. We also have uh, seen yeah. and, by, uh, and uh, translation and interpretation. Mm -hmm. So, we want to deal with the four, and we want to discuss and see how, what principle to use. Let me open it for our panelists. Maybe my sister. Click on one and uh, take us through and see what. Thank you, Elder, for the broad uh, in introduction. One thing that as we are reading the Bible, one thing that comes into mind is that we have to read the scriptures in the context to which they were written. Because if we miss this important part of reading the scripture in the context, then we might as well interpret the Bible wrongly. For example, in what you have said, that I will put an enmity between thee and the woman, the woman could have other ideas coming into her mind. So it is good that when you're reading a certain scripture, then put the concept into it. Then we have this presupposition. So we have to ask ourselves, what is presupposition? Presupposition is that thing that you believe or you assume beforehand. You, in the introduction, you say that you cannot read a Bible with a blank mind. You're coming uh, with maybe an idea. There are things that are coming before. So, for example, your education, your experience, or your even upbringing can help you to interpret the scripture. So, there are these presuppositions that even the 
uh, the disciples had. They did not understand clearly the scriptures about Jesus Christ. That is why when he rose from the dead, again came to them, they were not able to uh, clearly understand that this is Christ. So, another thing, if someone does not believe in the supernatural, so for them, it will also be hard to interpret the scripture. Because we say um, spiritual things are spiritually designed. Or, yeah. So you have to have that um, spirit in you to help us to interpret correctly the scripture. So as much as we have these beliefs and we have the education and all that, there is an important factor that helps us to correctly um, interpret the scripture, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is able to guide us to open our spiritual minds that we can be able to understand clearly what the scriptures mean. Thank you, my sister. Malim, if you, if you, you want to add me. something. Else. Yes, yes. I, I want to add uh, from where my sister has picked. Um, if you go to the book of uh, Luke, chapter 24, uh, verse number 37. Malim, if you're there, you can help us read. Luke 24, verse 37. Verse 37, and it yes. says, Yes. Uh, but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. You see, we are looking at the disciples here walking and Jesus appears to them after resurrection. And uh, the disciples, as my sister defined the presupposition, it is an opinion that was in the disciples. As much as they had walked with Christ before he died, he revealed to them that he would die and rise again. But still they had this opinion in them that, was it really true? So when Jesus appears to them in this verse, there is a fear and terrification that comes in them. Yet if they were to see Jesus and he had told them of this message, then ideally they should have glorified and, and, and rejoiced because Christ has come again. He's risen again. Mm -hmm. So the message that he actually gave them mm -hmm. was true. But we see here that they had opinions in, the, in, in their own mind that shielded them from accepting the message that actually Christ had given them before he died. This, this is also applicable to us today. Could we, by any chance, allow our opinions to bar us from accepting mm. Christ? Probably this, uh, uh, the disciples, probably they were spiritually blind, could we say that? Because they yeah, were not yeah. able to discern that this is Christ, Christ. his but, reason. But look at this. These are disciples, they've stayed with Christ for three and, and a half, half years. years. Yes, yes. yes. Christ has also resurrected a dead person. He has done all these miracles. And yet, they could not. I think they, they had pre-designed because they, were, they knew that Christ had come to get them, to free from them from the Romans. Which was wrong. They so did this, not... was, this did not come out, my yes. brother. What yeah. you I also want to add that... Uh, this is what we call preconceived ideas. Preconceived ideas. Yes. Like now, uh, they knew that Jesus Christ was coming as a Messiah to rescue them. And uh, the, the other, like, like now the two sons of Sebadi, you remember what, what their mother said? Please remember my sons. So that one of them can be on the right side, another one on the left side. They never understood the, really the, 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 the message and the, the mission Jesus Christ came to accomplish in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like uh, in our current situation, mm. there is uh, COVID-19. Somebody, you, you tell somebody I'm praying so that God protects me not to get COVID, and they tell you no. In this modern world, you don't need to pray. Just do what, keep distance, do what is required. The a majority, our world view does not take prayer. With this view, then it will block us from understanding what yeah, the Bible true, says. True. Now, my, my brothers, somebody said, if you had uh, a message and you align ten people, like ten people mm -hmm. around you, then you whisper this message to the first person, and then tell him to whisper the same to the ten, 
When it arrives to the tenth person, it will be distorted. It will be distorted. <laughs> yes, true. Now you can imagine this Bible was written in Hebrew and mm. Aramaic, mm. then in Greek, mm. then in Turkana, mm. then in Kisi. Uh, do you mm. think we are, we are reading a distorted Bible, Elder? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you know, the Bible was written in uh, different languages. Like now, the whole testament was written in Hebrews. Hebrews, yes. And uh, mm. apart from uh, the book of Daniel, it was written in Aramaic. Mm -hmm. But uh, the New Testament was mostly written in in, uh, in Greek. Coin, but now, coin, 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 yeah, coin, uh, coin Greek. Uh, Greek. Yeah. But uh, you know, most of these languages are, ne are not spoken these days. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important that the Bible is translated to a language we can be able to understand. Yes. For example, we have different languages. We have some languages which are universal all over the world, like English is universal. We have Spanish, we have French. But we also have our local uh, mother tongues that needs to be translated because there are people who have not gone to school. So the most important thing is uh, to, be able to, to be able to interpret the, the, the Bible and translate it correctly. And uh, the, the term used to describe the, the art and the skill of translating the Bible is called uh, amanitics. Amanitics actually translates the Bible from the original language to a, the language that we can understand. But to be able to understand the Bible clearly, you need to understand the original language and the context it was written to. But it's very difficult to be able to achieve that. Even now, translating from one language to another is not easy because some terms are not there. Mm -hmm. So you have to use a, a term that is almost similar. But uh, as, we, uh, as we see in the Bible, the, Bi they are, the, the, the most translation we have in the Bible, the new, 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 the new translation, King James, they have done a good work. At least we are able to get uh, clearly what was said. But there are things that we need to understand uh, as we translate the Bible. Although it was written in those different languages, it has been translated to a language that we are able to understand. But uh, there are several things that we need to understand. We are asking a question. Would you then suggest that mm? for us to understand very well this Bible, mm? we have to learn Hebrew? Or read it in that original language for us to understand well Mm. Because uh, do you think translating the Bible needed inspiration? Can we say they were inspired when they were translating? And I if they were inspired, <laughs> do we find any mistake in translation? Maybe, what do you think? Okay, well, the Bible was, of course, the writers were inspired when they were writing. Yeah. But even those who translated the scriptures, they also needed some spiritual guidance from God. Because... The, the way that I will translate one sentence is not the same way that you will translate the same sentence. And also, there are people who are gifted in translation or teaching or these messages. We see that in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 10. So, there are those who are given the gift. So, spiritual gifts are given. Are you there, Elder? 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. It says to, to another, the working of miracle, to another, prophecy, to another, designing of spirit, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. Yeah, so this interpretation of tongues is, okay, it can be the different languages unto which this Bible is written. So these are some of the gifts spiritual gifts that people are given to help in the interpretation and in the translation of the Bible. So my brother, I want to ask you this day, if, if somebody just got saved in church and comes to you and tells you, Robin, I need to buy a Bible, which translation would you advise that person to get? Well, uh, my opinion would be, you see, translations as we, we, we read them, Comparing different translations is very good because it gives you an in-depth understanding of a particular verse or a particular passage. But then if you want to buy a very specific version, personally, I use the King James Version. Mm -hmm. But I don't say that you should not compare with the other versions because you see the interpretation, as my sister correctly put it, we need and we require the Holy Spirit to help us correctly interpret because you can have an interpretation that is not correct. Let's see, for example, can you read the uh, 10? No, uh, yeah, Isaiah. you can read Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 28, 10. Isaiah 
28.10. Let's see what he said. Brother, you can read King Tim, James. Isaiah 28.10. And it says, this is the King James uh, translation, mm. for precept must be upon precept, mm. precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, King James mm. Version. Russian. What is your version? Mine is uh, New International Version. New International Version. What does it say? It says, um, yes, um, it says, for, for the ease, do and do, do and do, rule on rule, rule on rule. A little here and a little there. So do and do. Rule and rule. So, <laughs> so elder, and my sister is saying mm, they are inspired. They mm. are guided by the Holy Spirit. Mm. So my Holy, the Holy Spirit guided that man to say rule and rule. Do and do. I hear priesthood, my brother. Even, even as my sister is maybe <laughs> considering another version, I wanted to say, mm. we, we should now go back to what we've just spoken about, presupposition. It is possible that whoever was doing the translations of the different translations we have allowed had, the had a presupposition yes, before to influence yeah, or their translation. Yeah. Yes, my sister. So I wanted to read the same verse mm. that he has read, Isaiah 28, verse 10, in NLT. He tells us everything over and over again, a line at a time, in very simple words. Elder, there are some mm. who translate meaning mm -hmm. they translate meaning mm -hmm. to meaning mm -hmm. some translate word, word by to word. Word. word yes yeah. that is a, 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 a formal translation and some mm -hmm. give a paraphrasing Paraphrase. you understand the concept and then you, you write give the message the in your message. own words mm -hmm. so that's why that's why it's very important when you are translating the bible mm -hmm. you must be able to interpret correctly in the original language and the context it was written to Otherwise, you, if you, you, you just translate it, you get a, a wrong message. Let's read one translation, John chapter 14, verse 15. One verse, John chapter 14, verse 15. And see how it can uh, guide somebody. John chapter 14, verse 15. I will read from King James Version. It says, uh, John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's King James Version. Your version says? NLT says, if you love me, obey my commandments. Uh -huh. And yours? Mine says, uh, if you love me, you will obey what I command. This is the same, Melda. Do my commandments. You will obey what I command. Mm. Jesus commanded the wind mm. to the storm. He the storm. Stopped. He still. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. And here he's talking, uh, King James is talking of commandment. Mm. Him is talking of commanding the storm. Mm. See, they are now different. Are different and yeah. this, from this verse, now you can find why we have many denominations. They mm. don't think of the commandment. Mm. It has been translated on in command. Mm. He was translating meaning, mm. meaning to meaning. Mm. But the, the King James Version, mm. they were doing what? Word by word. Word, word okay. by word. Mm. Mm. That's great. Amen. Mm. Brother Just a, a, a last comment uh, that I would wish to say to our viewer. Yes. That it is not how much we read the Bible, it is how we read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Not how much we read the Bible. By that I mean, it's not reading three, four, five books. You can read a verse mm. and understand it, interpret it correctly. It's mm. worse than reading the whole Bible. The Bible. It's not how much we actually read the Bible, mm. it is how we read this Bible. Mm. Yeah. John 16 verse 13 it says John 6 chapter 16 verse 13 it says how bait when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth, truth. so you have to ask the Holy Spirit to, to guide, guide you mm -hmm. as much as you go you, you have this influence ask the Holy Spirit to guide you when you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you then you have an open Mind, mind yeah. uh, a, teachable a teachable spirit, yeah, teachable spirit, spirit yes, yes, true. a honest heart. Mm -hmm. Now you will accept and uh, accept uh, mm -hmm. the writings of 
the Bible. Mm -hmm. Elder. Elder Robin. Yes. Bible and culture. We were to do Bible and culture. Some people say that uh, this Bible is culturally conditioned. That uh, it speaks only to the culture of the time. Mm. And uh, it, to some extent, mm. it's not speaking. It's not speaking to us, my sister. Yes. This Bible, okay. Christ was born in a different, in a culture. So mm -hmm. whatever he did, it was meant for that culture. Yes. What would you comment on this? Okay. Well, the Bible is written in different cultures. For mm -hmm. example, the Old Testament, we had a different cultural setting mm -hmm. and also in the new uh, in the new testament it is also written in a different setting mm -hmm. but however all these different settings under which the bible is written they god um so that in the future all these generations will come to apply the teachings of the bible regardless of the scripture when we look at in acts chapter 17 verse 26 Acts chapter 17 verse 26 it says and has made of one blood all nation of men for to dwell all uh, 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 for to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation thank you so in this um Paul is writing and saying, and he has made from one blood, meaning we have one thing that is united, you, you, uniting us, and that is God. God created all of us, and that is something that unites us despite our different cultural backgrounds. So that means we can be able to apply even the texts that are written in this Bible to our present cultures. Yes. So it was not specifically meant for no. this uh, no. culture. Anything to add, Robin? I wanted to say, uh, while it is written to, in relation to that specific culture, it was written to appeal to that specific culture, to present the message to that specific generation. But the message was for all of us. It may be presented, you see, when Jesus is speaking of the parables, he uses uh, things that appeal to the people around mm -hmm. so that they are able to understand but the message it's is for, for all of us everyone yeah. yes. i also want to add that uh, you can even just take a, a little example like now the the branch of mathematics called algebra you know it was invented in baghdad a long long time ago mm -hmm. and even even Pythagoras theorem it was invented a long time ago in mesopotamia, in in mesopotamia. Yeah. but up now it's being used we are applying it so even even us, even us yes, is yeah, relevant to us. So Christ died not for that for the people of that time, yes. mm -mm. for us. For us all. Yeah. Yeah. It's for it's everybody. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Would this affect us? Like, if you want to fit, you know, sometimes uh, culture, we created culture, mm. but sometimes we become subject to culture. Mm. So let's get maybe that message from this lesson. Mm -hmm. That as much as we have a culture, we should not be subject to this culture. Mm -hmm. But the word of God is Remains, above. Yeah. Is, above yeah. Mm -hmm. is that right? That's yeah. right. Okay. It's, it actually says we can be culturally diverse, but united by the scripture. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Does Amen. it help Amen. us when we go for an evangelism as a church? Because sometimes you can imagine if we are going the four of us for evangelism. Mm. And uh, you, you, you take the Bible differently mm. you take the bible differently mm. or, or we are influenced differently with our culture then mm. we cannot do a unified mm. evangelism, evangelism yes. okay let's go to sin of course we were created in the image and likeness of god but after we sin this image and likeness was mad mm -hmm. so our approach to the bible as much as we once were in this image has been affected by the sin. sin yeah, that's true. So how does this sin affect us, Elder Onyancha? How does sin affect us not to understand 
the Bible. You know what? In us, as you say that when we see when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, he lost communication between between man and God. And God. Mm -hmm. That communication was broken mm -hmm. because of sin. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that sin, uh, even our thoughts, our perceptions, have also been interfered with. We cannot think clearly. We cannot uh, see God clearly as a source of uh, of our light. Because of that sin, that communication was broken, and everything that we do, whatever we we talk, we talk from human perspective. Some of us even even project our own pride. And uh, like when we look at the, the Pharisees, sometimes we feel, mm. or the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt, mm. we feel they are great they are great sinners. After all that evidence, and yet they were opposing the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, do, uh, how, do, uh, how do we draw that line? Are we also victims of the same? Oh, Robin, yeah. did you understand my question? Mm, no, no, no. Uh, yes. yeah. Okay, yeah, the, yes, uh, I get your question. The fact <laughs> this, you've asked that the Israelites, when they crossed, they, of course, they had, um, we project them to be as seen us mm -hmm. and something like that but mm -hmm. we are forgetting ourselves right. yeah so there are things in our sinful nature that are barring us from understanding and interpreting the scripture correctly number one is pride pride elevates us it makes us like, see ourselves as though we are mm -hmm. should i say above something mm -hmm. so that one mars our interpretation mm -hmm. of the scripture and our understanding mm -hmm. another thing is doubts when we have doubts in our head, we are reading, does it really mean this? Does it, when it does not go to, according to what we want, you know, sometimes we want something to fit our own interpretation. And when it does not fit, then you start asking yourself, no, this thing is not right. So that one also inter um, affects our interpretation. Then there is self-deception. We are, de sometimes we deceive ourselves. Yeah. Know. One statement, uh, the smarter we become in man's eye, the dumber we become spiritually. The foolish we Because become. we realize scientists are challenging the word of God. Mm. Yet they should be revealing the word of God. Because they're just studying what God created. They're not mm. inventing anything. Mm. But the smarter they become, the more challenge they give the word of God. As if mm. it can change, mm. yet it cannot. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to add that. That's why <coughs> when Jesus was, uh, was, uh, was preaching... He was able to see through the, the Pharisees. And that's why he told them, you cannot be able to see as seen in your brothers, uh, in your brothers when you, you have a full log in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Because those, when he was talking about the, 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 the log in your eyes, those are now the preconditions that you come with. Mm -hmm. they, they clog your eyes, you can't even be able to see. Mm -hmm. It seems. Yeah. So when we are reading the Bible, we have to allow... The Holy the Spirit, Spirit to guide us. Yes, true. It does not come with preconceived mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. that will bar, mm -hmm. will, will bar us from taking mm -hmm. the God's words. Yeah, the as you said before, we taken. must have a teachable spirit. Yes. That yes. one that accepts what we are being taught uh, by the scripture. There is one, thing, one story, one, 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 one uh, in uh, the part 11 life application. Mm -hmm. I will read and then we comment. Mm -hmm. There is a man who has uh, a a sick child and he has believed in God he believes in the Word of God he has prayed for this sick child to be healed then the sick child somehow is not yes. healed mm -hmm. so this person seeks traditional source of healing which will even connect him to a powerful which do which doctor which doctor of the community mm -hmm. so for us as Christian to avoid such a situation well, how uh, uh, to avoid such a situation in regard to the conversation that we have had here what would you advise such a person um my advice will be one mm. stick to the bible stick to the bible. stick to the bible and besides we have god says that uh, we have promises in the bible mm -hmm. and we know that everything happens for the good of those who love the lord so you cannot mix witchcraft and god in the same sentence they don't go together so you have to stick to one thing and someone who is truly convicted cannot look the other way because they will know that 
God's plan are always the best for me. Yeah, so mine is so to... We have to be faithful to the yes, word of God and exactly. take it the way it, it has said. Mm -hmm. Let us have faith in the word of God. Mm -hmm. My brother, do you have any comment on that? Uh, yeah, I wanted to comment that uh, uh, even when you pray, you need to be patient and wait for God to act. In fact, when you pray, God has already answered your prayer. But you, know, you, need, you need to be, to be patient and wait for, the God, for God's answer to come. Don't try testing so many other things. Which means you don't, you don't have faith in God at all. We, we bring that uh, pride. Mm -hmm. That pride. It comes because of sin. Mm -hmm. Because doubt not really, it brings doubt. When mm -hmm. you doubt the word of God, mm -hmm. then you'll be led to seek other, alternatives. Mm -hmm. other sources. Yeah. When Christ was uh, teaching the disciples about the Lord's Prayer, he finishes with a very powerful message. Yet not my will, but your will. The will of God. When you pray, you're not commanding God to heal your son. Mm -hmm. Neither are you telling God what to do. You're asking from God. His will shall be done. And remember, in the book of Jeremiah, the Lord says, He has good plans for us. Yeah. Call unto me. Your, your son dying could be a painful thing, but still God has a good plan for you. Mm -hmm. The point is that we need to go to God and cry to him to show us his good plans. Maybe the dying could be a blessing to you in a, in a different kind that you don't understand. I would not understand myself unless God reveals also to me. True. Yeah. Would you then maybe advise, you know, when you, if somebody uh, gets converted, you cannot just flash all the culture you have in a single day, all the education. Mm -hmm. It needs time. Yeah. Do you think it needs time or you need to flash like on this spot when you, you accept Christ, flash everything. Or do we have as Christian a period of coming close to God? What do you think? No, I think <laughs> <laughs> it comes slowly. It comes slowly because you cannot, for example, you're yes, you are a human being, and there are those things that you had learned before. Mm -hmm. So we we have to ask God to help us unlearn some of those things that are contradicting His message. Yeah. That's why the Bible says that. Uh, when you are newly converted, like a child, start taking milk. milk. Yes. As yeah. you grow, you yeah. start eating solid food mm -hmm. until you, you are now fully mature. So if you're converted, you need to have time to read the Bible it's so true. that this, this place goes gradually, gradually until, until you never you. reach until when Christ comes. Yes. So we, we will take our key verse. What did, what did our key verse say? Robin, read for us. That's Hebrews chapter 6 verse. Chapter 11, verse 6. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Correct. If you have faith, even when you'll be going to read the Bible, mm -hmm. your mind will be open to receive from that God works, all the yeah. doubt, all the pride, all the self Self-deception will come out and you'll be now closer to God and uh, God will work in you. Amen. Any, Amen. A, any conclusion from any one of us? I, want to, word for I, want, I want to add that uh, when we come to God, we should not come to vindicate our, our own opinions. Mm -hmm. Let's come open at it mm -hmm. to listen to God so that he can be able to, to lead us and mm -hmm. to be able to understand his word. Amen. Robin, anything? Yeah, my, my closing remark would be, um, Christ asked this very question, what would it profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul? This is a message that we need to go home with. Mm -hmm. What does it profit us to gain everything, yet lose our own souls? Mm -hmm. Let us learn to interpret the word of God as it should be interpreted. Let us interpret it prayerfully and believe that God will surely speak to us. Uh, my closing uh, word will be like, we have to approach the Bible in humility. We have to humble our spirits and we have to remove all that pride and uh, doubt from us to be able to receive from God. Yes. Uh, viewers, our conclusion is God is communicating to us. And what he's saying is, he's not, as a church, he's not guiding us to pick on one translation or two, compare translation. The most important thing to do is to approach the, your Bible study with prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and he will lead you into all the truth.
Amen. Amen. Let's have our brother Robin praying for us to close the session. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Our everlasting Father in heaven, we are thankful for this opportunity that you've given us. Lord, we've discussed together, brothers and my sister, Lord, we ask that this that we've discussed may continuously reveal to us Christ and Christ alone. Speak to us, Father. Interpret yourself even as we review and read the Bible. God, we need a spirit. And this spirit is the only spirit that wrote the same book that can interpret these words for us. May the Holy Spirit, therefore, Father, touch each and every soul that opens this holy word that, Father, we may get the supernatural interpretation of the words and, Father, that we may understand your will now and forevermore. Keep us, Father, in your word. Ground us in your word. Let us live in your word in our life on this earth. This I pray, believing and trusting in the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. God bless you. Indeed. Uh, welcome. Again, we are going to sing, num sing song number 294, Power in the Blood. Enjoy. church. Today it's a communication Sabbath and uh, we invite you to join the team as they lead us in this worship service. Number two, we encourage our members to worship God faithfully in our tithes and offerings. 
We want to thank the members who have been uh, serving God through their tithes and offerings since we went online. And today, we encourage you to worship God through the tithes and offerings using our M-Pesa baby number, which will be on the screen, 8549-58. Indicate the, whether it's you are paying for tithes or the offerings. God deserves, we serve him faithfully in our life through our giving. So today, let us not forget on how to give. Let us always serve our God through giving. And it's through this giving that is going to help uh, spread the gospel. So if you are giving tithes, indicate uh, under the account number, the tithes, indicate its offerings or for development. God bless you as you serve God through tithes and offerings. Lastly, we want to encourage our members. We have a program for 100 days of prayer. We connect with God every day, starting the day with God. From 6 a.m. to 6.30, all of us as a church, we connect with our God through prayers. Today is uh, the 44th day. We are in day number 44. And if you have been not uh, be, been a member joining in that program, we want to encourage you to be part of that program as we worship God together. Then in the afternoon, we'll have a session for Bible study, which will start at 2 p.m. Let us all be tuned to be ready to receive from our God, Jesus Christ. God bless you and happy Sabbath. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Once again, we now take this opportunity to present to you the communications department. It's a special day. They're going to present to us the newsletter, which is a new approach in evangelism in our church. Before we start the program, let us pray. Our dear Almighty Father, we humble before your presence this Sabbath day. It's a special day that you're going to launch our program for evangelism through literature. We want to invite you to guide us through this program as we start this program for our Northview SDA Church. It's a program that is intended to spread the gospel through the written word, a newsletter that will be prepared every quarter from our church. We will guide the team that prepares this document. May the Holy Spirit guide us through each and every article that is going to appear in the newsletter. As we start this program, it's our prayer that many souls are going to be transformed. Many souls will be converted for your kingdom. Bless this team. Bless not of you, SDA Church. As they use this newsletter and the visitors, the friends, may you be able to touch each and every one of them to know you and to know Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a humble prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Therefore, I want to take this time to invite our elder, Elder Oliver Rumiti, to dedicate this newsletter which has been prepared for this church. God bless you and welcome, Elder. Thank you, Elder, for the invitation. The Lord is good. And all the time, brothers and sisters, we want to 
dedicate the newsletters. But before I pray to dedicate, I want us to share a word from the word of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And it says, Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Brothers and sisters, you have seen, even with this condition that we are in, the Bible says it is for our own good. And we have taken the word of God as it is, because with this condition we have made, we have gotten niches to reach the people. We are reaching members, our members, and many other through online, online preachings. And now we've come up with the newsletter for the last quarter. And our, our title for this newsletter is Discipleship. You will all get a copy. A one copy, the other copy will be online. So at this point, I want us to pray and ask God for this new niche that we have gotten, that he be with us and he helps us to continue producing the newsletters every quarter until Christ comes. I think we will pray. Elders, pastor, come and help me. And then you will hold. Uh, let us pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for how you are revealing yourself to us and using us to reach as many people as possible. Because as Jesus left the earth, he said, until this gospel shall be preached to all the nation." then he will come back. We are using all the avenues that, are, that we have to reach each and every one of this world. Today, Father, this is another avenue that you have revealed to us, using newsletters with different targets. Like this one for the last quarter was discipleship. King of the glory, let us perfect in the production let us continue doing this and let us reach many through the newsletters. This being the first one, we want to pray that Father, you be with us as we hold hands. We place our hands on the newsletters, Father. Let them do the work that is intended for them and make, uh, make it possible for us to reach many souls and let your name be glorified. We glorify your holy name, for in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Sabbath. Um, <clears throat> so, from the communication department, uh, it came up with an idea that can evangelize to the church. And the idea was to capture uh, throughout the quarter, to capture the main, um, the main things or the main ideas or the main um, To capture the main uh, things that happened throughout the quarter and also to empower the members spiritually and so for the first quarter of 20, uh, 2020 we have captured a few of the activities that took place our magazine for this quarter is titled discipleship 
And this magazine introduces us to the various departments that are present in the church. We shall also look at the various departmental heads that are, um, that are heading the various departments in this church. So as you look through uh, the, the magazine, please take note of the various departments and the departmental leaders so that just in case you have any uh, concern or any idea that can benefit uh, the church in one de department or another then you'll know whom to uh, you know whom to approach thank you and enjoy reading the magazine thank you A happy Sabbath to you all, and I uh, uh, hope you're having a nice uh, like Sabbath, me. even as you're Sweet. seated at home and enjoying this oh, session. Um, we thank God for the ministry that we have you're through the person. printed word. And at this time, I'll just invite you just to share something small, even as we meditate on God's word and what he says concerning the message that is to be spread through the written word. I want us to look at the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 26 and I'm reading from the New International Version and it says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of the treasury of the Kandake. That means the uh, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And this is a passage of scripture which the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Then eunuch asked Philip, Tell me please, who is a prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. We can stand in the way of, uh, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave the orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. And Philip, however, appeared in Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns he reached until he reached Caesarea. This is a very interesting story in the Bible, which, amongst other things, points to the importance of the written word of God, also known as the silent messenger. This story is very similar. You have an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading a passage that he couldn't understand. But the Holy Spirit leads Philip to that person so that he can expound further the truth about the gospel. And in no time, the man had believed and wanted to be baptized, and he was baptized. In essence, the work of the silent messenger, that is a message as written in the print media, is of much importance. When you read the story uh, in uh, chapter 20 of the book, Great Controversy, there's a story of a man who was known as Joseph Scriven. Similar to the Ethiopian eunuch, he came across 
a passage, the passage in Isaiah. In fact, a Christian told him, you are a Jew and you're saying that the Messiah is coming, is yet to come. But go read Isaiah 53 and you will see for yourself that Jesus Christ, whom your ancestors killed, is a Messiah. And the young boy, very still at a young boy, uh, went and read the message for himself and he became convicted. And later on, he went on to become a powerful evangelist preaching in various continents, including Africa, Asia, the United States, and even Europe. In fact, he's known as the evangelist to the world. A very interesting passage here we see from the book of Acts chapter 8 and telling us of the power of the written word of God. It is very interesting that this Ethiopian eunuch was sitting down and he was in his chariot and reading the passage in Isaiah 53. Couldn't understand, but the Lord goes and tells Philip to go to that Ethiopian eunuch and explain to him this message. And in a similar fashion, we also have, when you read the book of the Great Controversy uh, in chapter 20, the story of a young man by then who was called uh, Joseph uh, Wolf. Joseph Wolf, also known as the evangelist to the world. His conversion story is very interesting. Arguing with an old man who was a Christian and he was saying, we the Jews are going to come and reign once again, once Jerusalem is restored, when the Messiah comes back. And then... Uh, the Christian says, do you know that your ancestors are the ones who crucified the Messiah? In fact, the Messiah is Jesus Christ. And he tells the young man, go read for yourself the book of Isaiah 53. And when he reads, conviction falls upon him and he sees clearly one of the reasons as to why the Israelites are even in captive, even till today, is because they killed the prophets. In essence, by reading the word of God, he became converted and became a powerful evangelist who went to different continents of the world, including Africa, Asia, America, and even Europe, and was a powerful evangelist. In essence, friend, there is power. There is power in God's word even when it is written. Ellen White refers to it as, as a silent messenger. And allow me to just read from the book Testimonies, uh, volume 6, uh, from page 315, which says that papers and books are the Lord's means of keeping the message for this time continually before the people. In enlightening and confirming souls in the truth, the publication will do a far greater work than can be accomplished by the ministry of the word alone. In fact, it goes on to say that the silent messengers that are placed in the homes of the people through the work of the converser, uh, converser will strengthen the gospel ministry in every way. For the Holy Spirit will impress minds as they read the books, just as he impresses the minds of those who listen to the preaching of the word. The same ministry of angels attends the books that contain the truth as attends the work of the minister. Friends, Northview SDS Church has embarked on a powerful ministry which is able even to go further than the spoken or the word as is preached. So today, friends, we are, I'm here to encourage you and to pray that the Lord may establish this work. Ultimately, it is him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So that we pray that the communications department, as Elder has mentioned, will go on with this work until Jesus comes. And as a member, your work is just to share, share, and also to share the stories of what God is doing in your life so that these stories may be captured in written form and inspire others. The book of Corinthians reminds us that God comforts us so that we may be able to comfort others with the same comfort with which we ourselves have received. I pray that this work goes on until Jesus comes again. May God bless you. Happy Sabbath Church. What a wonderful day that the Lord has given us. A day that has come with its own presence. Indeed, a new child by the name New Sireta entitled Discipleship is born unto us. As that song sings, how beautiful to, to hold a newborn baby in your hand. Indeed, it's a newborn baby in our church, and we derive that. And special thanks goes to 
the communication department that held the ship and other departments that have been involved in planning this may God bless you. Indeed, the title discipleship, it can be taken or it can be understood from years back from the ministry of Jesus Christ when he was almost ascending to heaven, he left this particular message to his, to his disciples so that they can extend the same unto us when he said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 down to verse 20 he said and Jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things uh, that I have commanded you, and the Lord, I am with you even to the end of the age. Since it's a promise that God gave us, that he is with us, and uh, he asked us to go far and far in expressing the same love, expressing the same message expressing that which he has taught us and that's why today a new child is being born in our hand giving a message that the Lord delivered many years back as it's being deliberated in our contemporary world and how it can even reach us even more so in this time when we, we, we are unable to socialize, to meet as we, we used to, to do. But this one is a silent messenger. As Aaron White says, that this one is a silent messenger who can penetrate boundaries, who can penetrate into lockdown areas, into quarantining areas, anywhere, so that the message therein can reach each and every one of us. So my members, as you will be having this booklet in your hand just remember how great God has been to us he has given us another new child so that our ministry can go forward I could also wish to welcome each and every one of you we are starting correcting articles for the next quarter for, for the next edition I ask that you may think of something good, spiritual, put it down, and make it, uh, or submit it to the communication department who will be able to, to, to make sure how forth it is going to be. And indeed, just imagine all good things we have, all good thoughts we have, if we are not going to keep them in writing, they are going to perish. So the only secret we have in hand is to make uh, them written and uh, this newsletter is one way of making what's in our mind a fire even for centuries to come. May God bless you. God be with you. God be with the communication department. God will be the elders council and everybody else who ensured that this magazine is produced and they may we look forward to even do better and better for the glory of the Lord. May God bless you. Thank you. Shall we pray? Gracious loving Father we thank you for this hour which you have given us. We thank you for this new child who is born in the north you family, the child by the name Newsletter, and more particularly in the past quarter entitled Discipleship. We are also looking forth for more and more for the days to come. We thank each and everyone who sat down to put something written and it has come this way. We want to pray for the communication department for their tireless time they are spending more so during this pandemic time 
and are ensuring we are reached with the best that we could have reached when the church was life. We thank you, Lord Father, for wisdom and knowledge that thou hast given to us. May we make use of it for your glory and honor. May the abundance of your blessings abide with us, go with us today and for the days to come. For it's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for uh, encouraging us. And uh, I won't forget to uh, uh, mention that uh, finally I managed to be at the pulpit, though the pulpit is a little bit taller, but I'm here. Uh, Pastor, you are Pastor or you are Elder Rumiti. I finally managed to sit on the seats there. Uh, I've never sat on them. I normally sit on them when I'm on the pew is admiring you sitting there, but finally I'm here. Anyway, my work is very simple here, just to give a vote of thanks. And um, I want to thank so much the, the communication, uh, uh, those people who are work, whom we are working with, my council members. They have been very much supportive. And um, I don't know how your other council members in various departments are, but mine, they are good. I would I wouldn't mind uh, being with them for the whole of uh, these uh, uh, my my time because after this year we'll have another communication leader. Um, I want also to assure you that we have a number of copies, but we'll deliver it per family uh, because we are not able to give we will we won't be able to give each and everyone its own copy, but we'll have. Uh, we'll give per family, and there Sister uh, Glenna will be able to help, and uh, she's part of communication. You can see we have a full church members. All of these ones are uh, uh, council members, so you see how rich we are in our department. So make sure you provide for us the name so that we start distributing the newsletters. We will deliver to your home because we understand uh, during this time we don't want you to come and... Uh, uh, we want to main, ma maintain the distance, the social distance. So we will deliver per family. Um, the second edition is on progress. So um, I know we've been uh, really following you to give us the content, the various departments. Please, when we ask for this content, please, uh, don't hesitate. Just give us the content. We will uh, uh, surely use them. So don't uh, wait for us to follow so much. Give us uh, the happenings in your department and then we'll put them, we'll put them into uh, the, this, the second edition which is on progress. Um, uh, uh, the other thing is um, about uh, the council members. I want to thank you for contributing. We've not really disturbed the, uh, just to lack of better word, disturb the church members to contribute for the production of this, but the council members have really contributed. I won't mention you by name, but there are some non-council members who I just approached and uh, you contributed. Uh, Ibrahim, Walter, Makoha. Makoha is a good friend of mine. Actually, is the person who handed over the department to me. And we have Silene, Sipora, and uh, Arema. Arema is an Adventist. I hope you are watching. Uh, I just talked to him and he told me that I know his dear and I'll do something for his dear and he gave me something. We are very much grateful for you. Now, when uh, you usema mcheza kwa utuzwa, there are some who have uh, really motivated me to work in this department and uh, as a leader of the department, I uh, thought it wise to give them something small. I know this is, might be a surprise to you, but Brother Jones, you can... Uh, give me my bag uh, so that uh, we see. Uh, uh, you know, for you to uh, deliver even this small new newsletter, it is not easy if you don't have a cooperating team to help. I want to assure you that these people have really helped. If I had enough resources, I would have given 
each and every one of you. Because even getting the content from you people has not been that... Uh, I've not followed you so much. But there are a few people whom we want to uh, reward. Um, I will start... Um, I hope, uh, Pastor, I'll, I'll be calling you so that you present the, the rewards to, to the following members. They have really worked and ensured that we have uh, this uh, newsletter. So I'll start by uh, calling upon uh, um, Vivian. I know Vivian is not around here, but uh, we'll request Nestle to pick the present for her and make sure she gets the, the present. Vivian is the, the main person who, has, who, who helped in the design. So we thank you and may God bless you. So, Pastor, this is a small token for Vivian. Uh, uh, Nestle to pick on her behalf. Um, uh, you will also give uh, Frederick. Frederick is also not around, but a very good friend of mine. Frederick ensured that um, the content which we have, he kept on encouraging me, push them, call these people. And he has a lot. I wish he could be the next communication leader. May Sister Glenna to receive on uh, her behalf, on his behalf, sorry. Next we have uh, Glenna. Glenna is our editor. I know you are wondering, if you have any content, just bring to us. We have Dr. Glenna. We'll be able to make for us those stories. So, present to Glenna. We also have um, Andrew. I'm privileged because my head elder is attached to this department. So you can imagine. And that's why you see we are moving very fast. Sipati uh, kutishwa uh, So, So, uh, Andrew, uh, that's our head elder. We are very happy. Continue supporting uh, uh, this department. And please, when you give you a big budget, don't chase us. Just support us. Like now, there are several things that we need. Ensure you, you support us. And uh, together with, I can see the pastor is nodding his head. All things is, uh, will work. I also have a present for... Uh, now, uh, my brother, you can come, you give pastor this present. You know, if pastor refuses, we, this magazine wouldn't have been there. So, I, I happen to have a pastor who is a friend. I can call and tell this is what is happening. So, God, God bless you, Pastor, for your entire work. I've known you. Uh, Pastor has not stayed so much in this station, but we are. I have loved the way he works. May God bless you, Pastor. Now I want to change and uh, invite uh, um, Elder Rumiti to help me give uh, the present. And uh, uh, yes, Elder, I want you to award this brother is a friend of ours he was the person we tasked he's called robin on Tita. he's the person we tasked with collecting the data for me no me i don't work i just give a call and he ensured that all the data was collected and we have what we have there in the newsletter so i want to thank robin for he wanted to skype not to come for today's sabbath but he's finally here we thank you for honoring I have, uh, I was amazed. Um, um, I think I've stayed for this church for uh, slightly over uh, uh, a year. But when I got the content of uh, the newsletter, I, I also love reading. So when I read the church history, I realized that the name Northview came from a little girl. I was amazed. Because in some other churches, you'll find that the elders sit in a committee and deliberate but i was amazed so i thought why don't you honor this girl by giving the girl a present so the girl is called gloria uh, she's also not around but i'll request uh, mrs uh, justice to come and receive on her behalf uh, mrs justice is called uh, deborah karibu sana receive uh, the present and don't go away just stay around because um, 
I'm also aspiring to be a pastor. I want to pray for you. So just stay around. On behalf of uh, Deborah, uh, on behalf of uh, Gloria. Then now, I've been looking for this man to come and share a word with our members. And unfortunately, the corona thing came. And I was wondering, will this friend of mine come or not? Uh, I know it's very hard to preach to benches. But actually, when I gave him a call and he accepted to come, I take that one as a great honor. And uh, once the corona is over, I believe my brother will come with the team. I love, there is a group called Shofar. They are supposed to be here this day, but they won't be able because we understand the government regulations. But we pray and hope that as when God deem, deems it fit, you will organize for us. They come and uh, minister to us through songs. However, I've loved the way he works as a young man. And uh, I want to present the, the present to him for serving us today. And this is for, you know, a family is one. You cannot give one person and leave the other. So they'll be wondering. So here is our small token from the department. Um, please, we want to honor you with that. And we thank you so much. Um, you might wonder, those people who have not received the present, not that you didn't help me so much, you, are, you played a part. However, for now, because of the resources, those, those are the ones that we could uh, award. Just as, uh, before I conclude, please, we are planning even to do a, a magazine. A magazine is bulky. So when we come for you to help us, please support us. I hope you will uh, help us with those few remarks. I will call uh, Brother Clive was around here to offer for us a closing prayer for this uh, service. Clive is also a member of our, our council and is the development leader. So you can see in communication we have all leaders. Um, we pray for you that. Uh, when you are building, you consider even communication in everything. There you do consider communication in everything. Ensure your budget is, is uh, linked with communication. Yes, because you are part of us. Otherwise, you can over for us. Let's have ourselves and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful occasion. Thank you, Lord, for the magazine that has been launched this day, Lord. May this magazine be able to reach all the people that are in quarantine, in uh, lockdown, in all parts of the world, Lord. Lord, we thank the communication department for the wonderful work they have done. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to use their talents to be able to reach people that are out of, out of, out, out of church, oh Lord. We thank you, Father, because you are mighty and you are great, oh Lord. During this uh, time of separation, Father, we are physically separated. But Father, through communication, spiritually you have connected us, O oh God. Our oh God, we thank this team. God, continue using their talents and together with the church leadership to be able to provide uh, information to your, to your people, Father. God, I commit all the members of communication department for their dedication, for their work and sacrifice, God, for making this dream a reality. Lord, we thank you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Happy Sabbath again. I want to welcome you to a small session um, that we want to study the Bible from our distances and share two questions. Thanks to the department and uh, thanks to our leader who has given us so much. Uh, none of us has thanked him, but we believe that God will bless you for the work. Now I want to invite you to take your Bibles and uh, such the answer to these questions. The rules are very simple. Open your Bible, listen to the question, and answer the question on the comments on YouTube or Facebook. The rules are the first to type. The answer should be precise and to the point. Precise and to the point. If you have the Bibles with you, 
The first question, listen carefully. Whose blood is the woman in Revelation drunk of? I repeat, whose blood is the woman in Revelation drunk of? I should be seeing some answers coming now. I give you 20 seconds to quickly look at it, type your answer before I go to the second and last question. Thank you. Question number two. This is easy. Question number two. Which is the oldest book in the Bible? God bless you. Let us keep on reading the Bible. Make it our friend that you live by it. God bless you. And now I want to welcome my panel behind here to be uprising and uh, put everything down. I just want you to have the magazine. The magazine. Obey social distances. And then uh, I also need mine. Yes. Can you raise them up and say that we've launched our magazine today, our newsletter, sorry, our newsletter today on discipleship. May it be the aspiration of each and every one of us, each and every one of you who is listening, that we be disciples of Jesus Christ until his second coming. God bless you. As you march forward as a disciple, as you march forward to deliver the message, as you read this, God bless you. May God bless you, may God keep you, and we look forward for more and more newsletters to come. Thank you. Finally, we will, because it will be public, uh, whoever will give the first answer, everyone will know their presence. The presents that will be delivered to you don't come to us. We will deliver and we will not rig because it will be public for everyone to see. So I welcome you to join us. Thank you. May God bless you. Praise God for to speak to us. Our speaker today is uh, coming from New Life SDA Church, our brother Justice Nyaga. He'll be speaking to us today. But before he comes up to speak, let us humble and pray. Let us pray. Our dear Almighty Father in heaven, our Creator, we come before you this Sabbath day. We thank you for you have been with us throughout the week. We humble ourselves ready to receive your word. Dear Lord, many of us have been weak throughout the week because of sin. We come before your presence asking for forgiveness of our sins. We come before you. You know each and every one of us where we have walked far from your grace. We ask 
that you may be able to forgive us and prepare our souls for your second coming. Dear Lord, we are going through a tough situation in our lives this period. You have not been caught by surprise. May we be able to understand. May you be able to hold our hand to give us strength as we go through this pandemic. May you help us to know your will. Dear Lord, I present members of our church, not VSDA church, who are watching, together with the guests who are watching this program today. Dear Lord, I present their petitions before your throne this morning. You know each and every one of them. You know their needs. There are some who have spiritual needs. There are many who have physical needs. There are others who have emotional needs. And there are others who have different types of needs. We ask today, as we worship, may you be able to visit each and every one of them. May you be able to meet them according to your riches in glory. According to your will, dear Lord, there are some who are sick in various homes. Dear Lord, our great physician, we ask that you may be able to talk, walk, and hold them so that they may get the healing that comes from you. Dear Lord, we come before your presence ready to listen to your word. We know you have prepared your servant, our brother, justice. The message that he is going to give us this day, we ask that you bless it. Prepare him. Talk to him through the Holy Spirit. As he is going to minister to us, may you empower him and prepare him. And the message that you are going to receive, may it impact our lives, transform us as we wait for your second coming. Reach to our leadership in our various churches, in our various countries. May you give them wisdom and knowledge to be able to do that is according to your will. We humble ourselves for what we have not prayed for and that which has been prayed for by my brothers and sisters across the world. May you put it together so that it's one prayer and answers according to your will. We come before you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you. Sabbath children, happy day. I hope you're enjoying your Sabbath so far. So today I want to tell us a story. And before I start, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this Sabbath. We thank you for this blessed day. And now as we listen to our story, we pray that we will be able to learn from it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So today I'm going to share... First of all, I am called Deborah. Today you can call me Teacher Deborah. And my story comes from the book of Genesis. It's about Jacob and Esau. So I'll just give a summary, but 
during your free time tell mom or dad or your sister or your auntie you can even read with your friend from chapter 27 till chapter 33 that's where our story is going to come from so jacob and Esau were born at the same time their father was called isaac and their mother was called rebecca so jacob and Esau had different gifts and i'll because i'm giving a summary i'll just give a just something small about them just to give you to make you curious and want to go read your bible more remember chapter 27 through chapter 33 so jacob and Esau they grew up and it got to a point when their father isaac was very old and he wasn't able to see very well he was blind and he was about to die so he called his son Esau. Esau was the firstborn and he told Esau, I am about to die and I want to bless you. So go to the go to go to go and um, he told Esau to go and hunt, then come prepare a soup and give him so that he can be able to bless Esau. Rebecca, the mother, loved Jacob so much, the other son, and he called Jacob and told him that now at this time Esau had already gone to hunt so that he could come and prepare the soup for the dad. And Rebecca called Jacob and told him, your father wants to bless Esau, so I want you to come, we prepare a nice soup so that you can take it to him and he can bless you. But... Esau was different from Jacob. Esau had hairy. He was hairy. He had a, an airy skin. And Jacob had a smooth skin. So after preparing the soup and everything, Rebecca told Jacob, go and bring a, a skin from an animal. We put it on you and then you can go to your father, Isaac. So Jacob did that and he went to the father he spoke to the father dad i am here bless me and you know he gave him the soup and the bread this is the here is the bread and the soup that you asked for but then his father told him why is it that you're speaking like jacob but your skin is like Esau's?" and jacob said yes dad I am Jacob, I, I am Esau, your firstborn son. Bless me. And Isaac blessed Jacob instead of Esau. So we learn something from this that number one, Jacob lied to his father. And I'll ask a question is it good to lie? No, we shouldn't lie to anyone. And I'll ask another question. How do you feel when someone does wrong to you, when your friend wrongs you or your sibling, your brother, your sister? How do you feel? It's a very bad feeling. You feel hurt and you feel very sad when someone you love or someone you trust lies to you. And we can imagine how Esau felt when he came back home and when he went to the father's room the father told him oh i had already blessed jacob jacob came and he 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 made me believe that he was he was Esau. so your brother has taken your blessings Esau was very mad and he he felt very bad he was bitter and he felt bad that jacob his brother had betrayed him so Fast forward, fast forward. Um, first of all, before we go to the last bit of this story, Rebecca knew that Esau will be very mad when he comes back home and he called Jacob and told Jacob, run away, go to your uncle's um, land, my brother Laban, and live there because your brother Esau will be very, very sad when he comes. And Jacob did that. He ran away to a far land and now let's go to many many years later after jacob had even married he had wives and he had children and it got to a point that 
now Jacob wanted to go back to his fatherland. And Jacob knew that he had done wrong against his brother and he knew that Esau felt bad about it and he didn't even know how he could face Esau once, you know, they meet again. Jacob prayed to God. He asked for forgiveness. And by the time he was leaving his, uh, his uncle's place, he knew that he had God's blessings. So on his way back to his homeland, he sent his servants, some of his servants, and he told his servants to go to Esau and tell Esau that. Um, so he sent these servants with livestock, with cattle, with, you know, cow, sheep, goats, because Jacob had a lot of this. And he sent them with all of that so that um, they can be able to tell Esau that Jacob is coming back and he seeks for your forgiveness. And Esau sent, now this man came back to Jacob and told Jacob, we went to your brother and your brother says he is coming to meet you with 400 men. Jacob was afraid. He was afraid. He thought, okay, so now Esau wants to come and kill me. So what I'll do, I will divide my people. Half of us will remain in this direction, and the other half will go to a different direction. So that if Esau comes and kills us, we'll still have some of our people remaining. And... I want to ask you a question. When your brother, when your sister, when your friend wrongs you, what do you do? Do you, do you forgive them or do you revenge? And I want us to learn from this story of Jacob and Esau. Um, the last chapter of our story, chapter 33, explains how, uh, or rather explains what happened when Jacob met Esau. Remember, Jacob was feeling very bad and he knew that Esau, Esau was very mad and Esau had come with 400 men to face him. So when Jacob saw his brother Esau from a distance, what he did, he went bowing down, you know, seven times till the point where he came close to Esau. And what did Esau do? Esau ran to Jacob and he hugged him. He embraced Jacob, he kissed him, and he forgave his brother Jacob for what he had done to him many years back. And from the story that we've just, because now I have come to the end of the story, yeah? From this story, I would love us to learn two things from both Jacob and Esau. From Jacob, Jacob, yes, he did wrong against his brother Esau and against God. But what did Jacob do? He asked for forgiveness. First from who? From God. He prayed to God to forgive him because he stole um, his brother's blessings and he also lied to his father. So he asked for forgiveness from God. And number two, he asked for forgiveness from his brother Esau. So as little children, as big children, may we learn from Jacob that anytime we wrong against our brothers and sisters, anytime we wrong against our friends, anytime we wrong against God, let's learn to go on our knees and pray and ask God for forgiveness. After asking God for forgiveness, let's learn to ask those whom we've wronged to forgive us. The final lesson is from, uh, I would love us to learn from Esau what he did. Yes, Esau felt very bad because Jacob took all his blessings from his father. But what did Esau do? He ran and embraced Jacob and he forgave his brother Jacob. So, may we learn to forgive the people who wrong us, and when they come to us and tell us they are sorry, let's be willing to, to forgive them. And 
let's have the heart of Jesus. Jesus, that's the character that Jesus had. He forgave people and um, everyone who was around him always loved to be around him because he was loving and he always forgave. So that is the story for today. And allow me to pray so that we finish this session. And remember chapter 27 through chapter 33. At your free time, please read the chapter, read those chapters, and so that you can know what happened in between. Because I didn't tell you everything, so all that you will learn uh, by yourself. Let's believe and pray. Dear Lord, we come before you once again. We thank you for the story that we've been able to learn. And Lord, we pray that these two lessons that we've learned, that we should be able to ask for forgiveness and we should be able to forgive those who wrong us. May we uh, practice these lessons in our lives, and may we always um, be good friends and be good siblings to the people that you've blessed us with. For it is in Jesus' name that I have prayed. Amen. <laughs>
Sabbath to you from wherever you are, and good morning. My name is Justice Njiru Nyaga, as has been mentioned, and I am very happy to be here at Northview Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is my very first time to be here, and I am glad to be here. In fact, I found this fellowship to be very warm, and we thank God. I want to give God the thanks and the glory for enabling me, uh, together with my wife, to be here today. And I also want, in a very special way, to thank the church leadership uh, led by uh, Pastor Mochache for allowing us to be here. And in a very special way, I want to thank the communications director, uh, Brother Isaiah, for the good guidance or the briefings that he's been giving me even as I prepare for the message for today, this being uh, a communication Sabbath. I also want to thank uh, the people who've just, uh, the children's story, and that is my wife, for accompanying me and for giving that beautiful a children's story based on uh, the book of Genesis and reminding us of the power of forgiveness and how we ought to live together in harmony even while at home. Right now we are just at home, you know, for a long time this has been uh, a new experience, many people are living at home, but she's reminded us that we just need to live cordially as brothers and sisters in the fold of God. And thank you so much uh, for that beautiful story. So, uh, for today, um, I want us to focus on the gospel, but more particularly on the power of the gospel. The message today is entitled, The Power of the Gospel. The Power of the Gospel. The gospel being the good news of the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection, and the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. In essence, the good news of our salvation, the power of the gospel. In this world and in this life, I have come across very, very many powerful things. Things that are powerful. Power means the ability or strength to do something. But powerful means that which is full of power. So uh, another way of or strength or another way of uh, defining the word powerful is that which is full of power. Hence, power full. So, um, when you think of something that is powerful, what comes to your mind? I know for some of us, one of the things that comes to mind is a political office, more specifically that of a king or a president. Have you ever seen a president in real life? And if you've ever seen a president in real life, you know how he's surrounded with a lot of a display of power, both uh, starting from the very many bodyguards who surround him, going to even the many, uh, the convoy of vehicles that escorts him, and most of these vehicles are normally armored. And if you've seen it, I, I remember one day I was walking along Kenyatta Avenue in Nairobi City, and all of a sudden I realized everybody has come to a standstill. Nobody is walking, and I wondered what is happening. And looking aside, I see policemen who are standing by my side, and very inter interestingly, I I decide to stop as well because people are, have stopped, so why should I be walking? And then in a few seconds, one motorbike, a big motorbike, just passed with the police and with sirens. Then I realized this must be somebody powerful who's passing. And in no time, there was a whole convoy of vehicles, heavy engines which are sounding, and one could just stand in amazement and see, wow, this is just a powerful person who's passing. It was a president who was passing. And the power, you could even feel it, not even seeing it or hearing it, even feel it. You can feel that you're in the presence of a powerful person. Another example that probably right now we can relate to even more is that of the situation that we're having right now. We are having a disease which has even been a big problem to the countries that we consider to be superpowers right now, like the United States of America and even China. You can imagine they have billions and billions of shillings and uh, US dollars in, in, in their budgets to, you know, to equip their military with the best technologies in terms of fighting. But one small, one small atom you know, of a virus is becoming a menace to them. You can <laughs> conclude that this virus appears to be very powerful because it, is, it has even changed how the world is moving right now. And of course, that is why today, we are preaching while you are at home and I am standing here in church alone. But, of course, 
God is with us because he is everywhere. And you see, the thing is, friends, this world has a lot of powerful things that, that we can consider to be powerful. But it is very interesting that I have come to learn that even for these things that we consider to be very powerful, they are stoppable. For instance, look at the kings. History records that there are kings who are so powerful, but they were able to be stopped or they were even deposed. Very interesting. When you read the book of Daniel, Babylon was a powerful kingdom, very wealthy, extremely wealthy, and they thought that they could not be conquered. But when you read Daniel 5, while Belshazzar, Belshazzar is there and having a feast with his advisors instead of preparing for war, when they heard that the Middle Persians were attacking, they were just busy partying, then they, they blocked the Euphrates and, uh, and invaded the city, and the Middle Persians conquered Babylon. In essence, the powerful kingdoms of back then all fell, and the story goes on like that, you know, after Middle Persia, you go to Greece, after Greece, you go to Rome, and they have just been conquered one after the other. Powerful political seats, powerful presidents, powerful kings are stoppable. Better still, you're wondering, now this, you've just talked about a powerful disease, coronavirus. Right now, we know that it started in China, but we have reports that it's even being slowed down by the day and the curve is being flattened. And we believe by the grace of God, this disease is going to be stopped. Interesting, very interesting to note that even the powerful viruses that we think are so powerful, they are stoppable. In fact, my Bible tells me that this world is not going to come to an end because of a disease. It is not a disease which is going to mark the end of the world. When you read the book of Matthew, these pandemics are just but signs that Jesus is coming soon. And I believe that with all my heart, that Jesus is coming soon. Luke 21, 28 reminds us that when we see these things that appear to be powerful, we should not be frightened, but it is our time to look up high and because our redemption is drawing nearer by the day. This world, yes, has powerful things, but even these powerful things are stoppable. But it is very interesting that in the few years that I've lived on this earth, I have come to discover that there is one thing that is very powerful and is not stoppable, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. As Paul puts it in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, that I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto the salvation of man. The gospel is powerful. The gospel is powerful and unstoppable. And, and um, the thing is, you cannot stop it. I cannot stop it. And I pose it to you that even political governments or governments or political leaders, as powerful as they may be, they cannot stop the spread of the gospel. When you read history, in the 18th century, the gospel was spreading so fast, but by then the political system, which was a combination of political and religious system, were threatened by the spread of the gospel, the good tidings that Jesus is about to come soon. And they made laws which prohibited people from preaching. But interestingly, the gospel could not be stopped. Why? Because God raised up child preachers. And in fact, it is recorded when you read the book of Great Controversy that these children were between the ages of six and eight years. Young children. And these children ordinarily manifested the intelligence and ability usually seen in children of that age. And when they stood before the people to preach, it was evident that they were moved by an influence beyond their natural gifts. In fact, their tone and manner changed. And with solemn power, they preached the gospel. That is uh, Great Controversy, page 366, uh, paragraph 3. Political leaders cannot stop the spread of the gospel. And I pose it to you as well that even religious leaders, religious leaders cannot stop the spread of the gospel. They tried to do it during Jesus' times. 
and my Bible records in the book of Luke chapter 36 verse 40 that they even, as Jesus was getting into Jerusalem during the triumphant entry, the, the priests came and, and they said, and they said, the Pharisees who were there, they, they called Jesus and, and they told him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus told them, in short, he was just saying, by the way, the gospel cannot be stopped. He said, I tell you, he replied, that is verse 40, if they keep quiet, these stones will cry out. In essence, Jesus was saying that the gospel will be preached. Because when you read Zechariah 9.9, it had been predicted that Jesus was to come in such a manner. And even if they were to stop it, the gospel will still move on. It is no wonder that Jesus declared in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, that the preaching of the gospel in the whole world as a testimony to all nations will be the last sign before he comes. In essence, until Jesus comes, the gospel will go on with much power, with much power, not for the conversion of the whole world, but as a witness to the whole world. The gospel cannot be stopped. The gospel is powerful. But have you ever wondered why the gospel is so powerful? Today, friends, I would like us to focus on the reason behind the power of the gospel. But before then, I will have us pause for a word of prayer so that even as we look into the word of God, we can see uh, why it is that the gospel is powerful and our role in the gospel. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we are grateful for this day. Even as we dig into your word to see how the gospel has been moving from time to time, Lord, we pray that may you help us to understand that you are the one behind the gospel. And most of all, Lord, that may we accept you into our lives so that we can be co-workers with you to spread this good news of your kingdom. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I tried and tried to the best of my human ability to research on the reason as to why the gospel is so powerful. And I could only come up with one answer. And that is, it is because of God. The main reason as to why the gospel will move on, whether there be a pandemic, whether there be no pandemic, whether the government tries to stop it, whether the government doesn't try to stop it, whether the political leaders or religious try to stop it, or whether they do not stop it, is because God has said it. When you read the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8 to 11, go with me to Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8 to 11. And it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and the bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When God says that something is going to happen, it must happen because he is God. As Isaiah is pointing out, God had long predicted the coming of the Messiah to save the world that was lost in sin. In fact, before sin was, there was a savior. The book Desire of Ages puts it this way. The plan of salvation was not an afterthought, a plan that was formulated after the fall of Adam. It was a revelation of the mystery which had been kept in silence through times eternal. That is, according to Romans 16 verse 25. It was an unfounding or an unfolding of the principles that from the eternal ages have been the foundation of God's throne. From the beginning, God and Christ knew 
that the apostasy of Satan and the fall of man through the deceptive power of the apostate. And, and, and God did not ordain that sin would, should exist, but he foresaw its existence and made provision to meet the terrible emergency. So great was his love for this world that he covenanted to give his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Jesus came just as he said he would. Before sin, the plan was already in action. And Jesus came in fulfillment of the action. In fact, when you read the whole of Genesis, uh, from Genesis to, the, to Malachi, there are very many types which point to the fulfillment of this plan of our redemption. A, a good example is Genesis 22, where Abraham is told to offer his son Isaac, and when he's offering him, it is very clear that this was a type of Jesus who was the only begotten son who was to be offered for the sins of the world. That is Genesis 22. You can read that story at home. Isaiah 53 points to a time when uh, and predicts the things that Jesus will go through. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for iniquity, our iniquity. He bore our sorrow and by his stripes we are healed. The whole of the Old Testament points to the coming of the Messiah. And for sure, Jesus came. And even when he came, he lived and declared with his own mouth when he was explaining to his disciples in Matthew 24 of the signs of his soon return. He declared that, you know what? What will mark the end of this earth is the preaching of the gospel as a testimony. In essence, what Jesus was saying is that the gospel will go to all nations because it has been planned and it is God who has said it. Him, being God himself, declared it and it must happen. Friends, the reason as to why the gospel is unstoppable is because of God. And it is because of God alone. You may want to point out at this time and age when we are having a lot of technology that, well, maybe it's because of the vessels that carry the gospel. But you see, the Bible is very clear as to the instrument or the vessel that God uses for the spread of the gospel. When you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says that, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. What that means, friends, is that the instrumentality that God has chosen for the propagation of the gospel is in and of itself a testimony that the power of the gospel is from God. This power is from God. The reason as to why the gospel will go on, whether we like it or not, is because God has ordained it. And the instrumentality that God has chosen is, has been done in such a way that anybody who sees it will acknowledge that the power of the gospel is of God and not of man. God put such a great treasure in such weak vessels that the greatness of the power may be of God and not of us, so that it will be evident to anyone who has eyes to see that the work was being done by the power of God and not the power of the vessel. Why did God choose risky, earthen vessels like me and you instead of safe, heavenly ones? Because perfect vessels are safe, yes, but may bring glory to themselves. But earthen vessels are risky, but can bring profound glory to God, the author and finisher of our faith. The instrument God chose uh, uh, to spread the gospel, testify of the power of the gospel. As the songwriter says, all the depths of love divine, earth or heaven can never tell how that scenes as dark as mine can be made as white as snow. Indeed, this is a powerful testimony of the power and the love 
that God has for the lost human race. God chooses the weakest of the weak, the vilest of the vile, to manifest his power. In fact, when you read from Genesis to Revelation, that has been the storyline. Right now, if you may think of one of the people, some of the people who are very despised in the society, you might think of madmen, but has God at times used madmen to spread the gospel? Well, God has healed people who are demon-possessed, demon-possessed who are abandoned and immediately commissioned them to the gospel. I'm referring to the story in Mark chapter 5, verse 1 and 20 and in other uh, parts of the gospel. Jesus goes to Gerasene and meets this demoniac in verse 15 and then he heals him and immediately, by the time people are coming, they find him seated clothed and in his right mind and, 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 and he's seated there and he wants to follow Jesus. But Jesus says, don't follow me, just go back home to your people and tell them what you have seen. And immediately Jesus commissions him as an evangelist. Verse 19, he had a legion of demons which were sent down to over 2,000 pigs. And, 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 and immediately after Jesus heals him, it doesn't take long, he just commissions him and tells him to go and proclaim. And verse 20 records that the man goes and proclaims what God has done for him in the Decapolis. You know what, friends? At times we want to sit down and hold back the things that God has done for us. And I'm glad that the church has uh, launched a newsletter where we can be able to share our experiences and testify of the goodness of the Lord. And when you read the book Desire of Ages, it records that this one man who was once mad ran and preached and preached to the entire of the city such that Jesus went in that city, Decapolis, the first time and he was chased away. But the second time that Jesus goes to the city, what happens? He is received. In fact, the, by the time Jesus is feeding 4,000 people, Desire of Ages records that these 4,000 people were as a result of the labor of this madman. One man, mad, madman who looks like he, he's of no use, but God uses that man as a vessel, that weak vessel, so that he, he can carry this treasure, which is very precious, of the gospel to preach to the whole of Decapolis so that when people look at him, they will say, indeed, this power is of God and not of man. Harlots, adulterers, very despised in the community, but Jesus chose them to spread the gospel. I'm pointing you to the book of John chapter 4, verse 4 to 26 of the Samaritan woman. They meet, have a conversation with Jesus, and Jesus teaches him from verse 16 to 26, and she becomes immediately an evangelist. By the time the disciples are coming, Jesus, it's interesting, he sent out all those uh, uh, 12 disciples to get bread. All the men. But he wanted to have communion with this woman. And by the time she had met Jesus, because she thirsted for something, something, Jesus gave her the water that was more precious than the water that he, he was borrowing from her. And immediately she goes and preaches. And the whole city comes. Look, when you read the Bible, you see that the whole city came because of her testimony. She just went and said, look, here is a man who has just told me everything that I've ever done. Come and see and come and see and come and meet him. And the Bible records that the people came from all over the city and they listened to Jesus and believed on him, not now based on the story of the Samaritan woman, but based on their experience with Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. An important lesson to us who are evangelizing, even as a communication team, goes to put out the testimonies in the form of written print. Ours is to lift up Jesus. John 12, 32 says, And when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Ours is to point the world to our Savior. It's not to point them to these magnificent buildings that we have or the latest technology, but the need of this world is the need of a saving Redeemer. And when we point them to Jesus, Jesus will do that which he does best and which is to transform sinners like me to become ministers and preachers of the gospel. Mary Magdalene, 
Now, this is a very interesting case. Now, Jesus is using the vilest of the vile. Now, she was demon-possessed, like this other demon-possessed guy, and she was also an adulterer. She was a harlot. But God chose to use such a kind of a woman. I'm pointing you to the story in Luke chapter 8, verse 2, and also in uh, John chapter 8. And when, by the time you get to Luke chapter 8, verse 2, Jesus teaches her, and then, and then after that, John 12, verse 1 to 11, uh, she becomes an evangelist. In fact, Mary Magdalene, who was once considered an outcast, had the privilege of declaring one of the precious news that human beings can ever be given. She declared that Jesus is alive. She was entrusted with that message of saying that Jesus is alive because Paul puts it that if Jesus uh, did not resurrect, then our faith, our faith is nothing. But she was given this trust of declaring to the world that Jesus has resurrected. Friend, God specializes in using the weakest, the vilest, so that they can be vessels to transport this good news of the kingdom. And what the, how does he do that? He comes and changes them and gives them the message and empowers them to go and preach to all the ends of the earth. Friends, the power is of God. As I have mentioned, the only reason that I could come up with is that the gospel is powerful because it is the power of it is it is it is because of God. He is the reason of the gospel's power. He designed it, as Hebrew puts it, is the author and the finisher of our faith. The gospel is powerful not because the pastor is eloquent, not because the church has a beautiful building, not because the choir sings well or the church has the latest technology or newsletter, but the gospel is powerful because of God. As I conclude, friends, we have this privilege of getting to know the gospel. There are parts in this world where the gospel is not rich. A story is told of this woman in China who uh, ran from North Korea and she defected, went to China, and as she was sitting there, um, she was hiding somewhere, and then she heard from the Ad world, Ad, uh, Adventist World Radio the story of the gospel. And in search for more truth, looked for a church in China, and she went there and she really prayed that she wanted to be baptized. The pastor met her, and they studied for one week, and after the studies, she was baptized late in the night because also in China there is no much freedom of the gospel. And she was baptized and she was babbling and she was saying, I want to go and tell this good news of the kingdom to my kin, even across the border, go back to North Korea and preach. And as she, uh, she was released the very same day after being baptized, and as she was on her way, she went and um, called the pastor when she was at the border. She told the pastor, Pastor, about the border, please pray for me because I'm making this and I want my people to get to know the gospel. But unfortunately, she was captured by the soldiers, the Chinese soldiers, and she was taken back to North Korea and was given the ultimate penalty, which is death. By the time she was dying, or by the time she was captured, these soldiers or the government thought that she was their captive, but little did they know that she had been set free because she had accepted Jesus and she was free from the bondage of sin. Friends, it is a privilege that we can even hear or preach this gospel. And I'm asking you today, in the harvest field now ripened, there is a work for all to do. Hark! Jesus is calling to the harvest he's calling you. Does a place you're called to labor seem so small or even little known? Guess what? It is great when God is in it and he will never forsake his own. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or for fame. There is a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Today we are inviting you, even as you join us in this course and in this train of the gospel, because it is moving and it is moving at a high speed and all that the Lord wants of us is cooperation with him. The gospel is powerful because it is of God. At this time, even as my wife sings a song, I'll pray that may you think of the words that we have shared and then I'll be offering a closing prayer so that we can trust in God in all that we do because this work is his from the beginning till the end.
May God bless you. for that beautiful song. The Savior is waiting for you to open the heart to your door. 
We've just learned that the gospel is powerful and God is the reason behind it. But guess what, friend? God never uses force. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says that, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. So that Jesus is always knocking at the door of our hearts so that when we invite him into our hearts, he comes and dwells in us and changes us from inside to outside. The question is today, are you going to accept him? We've heard that the gospel will go on whether we like it or not. Are we going to accept Jesus? You've been listening to this message and you have said that, friend, I have heard you talking about Jesus and about the gospel and about that he died for me so that I cannot uh, die and uh, so that I can inherit uh, eternal life. And you're asking today that, well, I've heard of this Jesus, but I don't know even how I can accept him into my heart. I have good news for you today. It is very easy. I'll just say a prayer, and then you repeat after me and believe in your heart that he is listening and is willing to answer this prayer. Say, you can close your eyes and say, Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I am a sinner. You know it, and I know it. And today I want to say that I'm sorry and I pray that you forgive me of my sins and I believe that you died for me at the cross. Thank you for loving me and I invite you into my heart today to stay forever. In Jesus' name, amen. And just like that, you've accepted Jesus into your heart. And the next step that you now just have to do is to look for the nearest church next to you. You can come to North USDA Seventh-day Adventist Church or the nearest uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church next to you so that you can study the Bible and also now show to the whole world that you have accepted Jesus as your Savior through the ordinance of baptism. And once you do that, the Bible says that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And just like that, you become a vessel that God is willing to use. Just as, like that Gerasim demoniac or that Samaritan woman or that uh, Mary Magdalene. God is willing to use you in a mighty way even right now as we approach the end of time to tell the world that Jesus loves them and he's coming back soon for us to take us to heaven where there will be uh, no more death. Maybe you've accepted Jesus into your life but you have realized that there are many times that you've wanted to take the glory that is due to God. In fact, you've thought that the gospel will spread because of your gifts or because of your talents. But today you've realized that the gospel is powerful because of God and God alone. And today you want to humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the times that I've wanted to take the limelight and I want you to use me because you cannot... We cannot be in competition with each other and you want to humble yourself and say, God, please use me for your service and your service alone. If that is you, I will request that even from wherever you're watching us from home, just as a sign of respect, you can stand up as we offer this prayer together with me, as we ded dedicate our lives to Jesus once again and to pray that may he use us for the purpose which he has intended to so that we can just be but vessels to carry the treasure of the gospel. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the one who designed and you are the architect of the gospel. And the gospel has been moving even uh, since the time of the fall of man and it will continue to move till when you come back again. And interestingly, Lord, even when we get to heaven, we'll still remember the story of our redemption, which is going to be the science of our study for, uh, throughout eternity. Lord, we pray that may this realization come to us, and we thank you because you have reminded us that the gospel is powerful because of you and you alone. And may our aim in our lives be to glorify you. Lord, we want to say that we are sorry for the times that we wanted to attribute the success of the gospel to ourselves and we want to humble ourselves because you have promised in your word that if we humble ourselves you are going to lift us up lord most of all we ask that until jesus comes 
may our decision be solely to raise you up and may you do that which you do best, which is to draw all men unto yourself. Forgive us for the times that we have wronged you and we pray that may you seal these decisions that we have made to recommit our lives to you uh, until when you shall come back for us. We thank you for, for the promise of your soon return and we ask these things through the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you even as you continue to be a vessel of carrying the treasure which is the gospel. Oh, oh, oh.